Hello, Bezel Triple Three here. I'd like to ask the question, what is the purpose of Christian worship when the assembly of believers comes together to worship God? And I want to ask this in the context of the continuing phenomenon of holy laughter and speaking angelic tongues in the worship assembly. Now, this is Kathy Walters. She gets angelic visitations. She gets messages directly from Jesus. She teletransports to various places in the uh, world. Uh, she's actually trying to preach right now, but with this cacophony of laughter and silliness going on, uh, she can't. And what I want to ask is, can you have both? We know that preaching should be part of a worship uh, gathering, uh, but is this holy laughter, and we'll talk about tongues in a second, do they mix? Well, let's see what she has to say. I'm preaching, okay? I'm preaching. You've got to listen up. So apparently, if you're rolling in the aisles and laughing, you're not listening. Uh, and, and you have to listen uh, if you're going to understand what the preacher is talking about. The other thing I want to say about holy laughter is it's not exclusively a Christian phenomenon. It's been going on uh, quite long, maybe thousands of years. Uh, India has quite a history of this. Let's take a look. This is an ancient form of yoga, and its followers believe that a good belly laugh in the morning stimulates the soul and sends positive vibrations to everyone around you. Let's say in laughter exercise, we do start uh, as a fake laughter, as a kind of uh, forced laughter, but when you laugh in a group, you have a good eye contact, it turns into real. So you can get away with it by faking it, you yes. still get the good effect. Yes, we have a slogan called, fake it, fake it until you make it. <laughs> Fake it, fake it until you make it. And that's true. If you get together with other people and somebody starts to laugh even fake, perhaps after a while it starts to build on itself and before you know it you've got uh, crazy laughter going on. It's, it's what's going on in these churches. It's self-induced, it's hysterical, um, and it's, it's, it's not the place. You know, Ecclesiastes tells us there's a time to laugh and a time to mourn. And is worship, again, the place where we should be acting like lunatics? And I say, no, it is not. In fact, when we look at Revelation in, four, in, in chapter 14, we read this about the angel that comes with the gospel. This angel comes having the eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation and tongue and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Now, should I, am I saying that we should be uh, completely dour and down during worship? No, but you know what? We come to worship to give to God. We should give him our adoration and our gratitude and our attention as he blesses us with the things he has for us, which is knowledge of his son Jesus Christ through the singing of the Psalms and the songs, the spiritual songs, and the preaching of the word, and the prayers, and it should all be Christ-centered and cross-focused. From one person to the next. But with the concept already big in the US, Australia, India, and most of Europe, the question is, will it catch on here? Now let's talk about this angelic tongue business in worship. I'm going to speak in tongues right now, and then I'll give you the interpretation at the end of the video. Uh, I'm sorry, Ken. Say again. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> so 
de ma de mang ba khu gal pha kha ba na nan la li ki te ve be na ma ha do la gla ma be 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 dos dos ke shel la khendish ba ba la mangre de be stili si gresto no son das now that makes me laugh I mean, okay, I guess you could say that that's an angelic language and, be, and then we wouldn't know what it is because it's nothing we've heard on earth. Uh, but, but is it actually an angelic language? You know, Paul, we know that Paul went to the third heaven and saw things that could not be expressed. But did he make a big deal of that when he was training Timothy to be a good pastor? No. What he says to Timothy in chapter 4 is, in pointing out these things to the brothers, you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ, constantly nourished in the words of the faith and of the sound doctrine which you have been following. It's about the, the revealed words of God to us in and through Jesus Christ, which has now, you know, the spoken word has now become the written word. We have all we need, and this is what needs to be explained, prayed upon, sung about, and trusted. Now look at the next couple of clips, and I want you to see if you can find any similarities. <laughs> Remember that little bit of uh, tongue speaking that I did? Well, I want to be biblical, so here's the interpretation. The meaning of your communication is the response you get, no matter what you intended. That little phrase, the meaning of your communication is the response you get, no matter what you intended. Of course, it's not a biblical phrase, but it's very true. And if the communication is all about getting the liver shiver or feeling the power and the glory, then that's the response you're going to get. You preach that and you're going to get that. You know, in Luke 11, we read Jesus' words. He says, this generation is a wicked generation. It seeks after a sign, and yet no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Today, we live in that generation. Uh, much of modern Christianity is seeking after the things that don't really satisfy. The sign of Jonah was the sign. The fulfillment of Jonah being in the belly of the whale three days and three nights is the life, death, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. As a church, much of us uh, are, are going after things that don't satisfy and, and really are distracted by the things that are uh, unnecessary. You know, C.S. Lewis said, we're like little children who like to spend time playing in the mud puddles by the gutter because we can't imagine a day by the seashore. Seek the church that will preach Christ and Him crucified, for there you will find the mystery of God. There you will find true glory in the cross of Jesus Christ. <laughs> 